Good day, folks. After further experimentation here, I've, um, I was actually, the way I got to this was through working with my scalar detector. I wanted to make sure that essentially it wasn't sensitive to ele near, you know, uh, magnetic fields and electrostatic and lightning and that sort of thing, because that's not what I wanted to do. So an easy way of what I had around the house to calibrate it with was, you know, I had this jar here. So I, you know, go like this and then, you know, test for um, re reactions and um, sure enough there were no reactions which would meant is good because my device wasn't getting triggered by this but then again once in a while I'd get this weird you know 0 0.1 0 0.2 on my meter that means nothing by the way only that it's being triggered and what intensity basically so I'm thinking you know this thing's out of electrostatic and it doesn't seem to make a difference whether it's energized or not but again depending what time of the day and whatnot it seems that when I put it nearby I was getting some what appeared to be false positives so I got really puzzled with this and I went and maybe because I didn't go to school for this I didn't go into engineering school and maybe this was in day one and unfortunately I missed the memo but I should have gone it is um, I'll tell you what it is I asked Chad GPT you know what possibly could cause a plastic container to start emitting you know EM fields so it starts giving me all these list of possibilities you know it's most likely maybe something you've got in the house a generator a nearby tower blah 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 all the stuff you know that I've um, narrowed out and then the last one really interested me is dialectic resonance I honestly didn't know such a thing existed when it's non conductors but I did the research on it and apparently it's really much a thing but traditional electrodynamics doesn't seem to go there the resonant part of it so reading more into the lectures of this stuff the way it apparently if I'm getting this right is when the dialectic if it's in resonant with any kind of nearby field will excite and emit an energy burst out in return so um, it's a kind of interaction but here's the kicker it has to be resonant with whatever it is out there that's triggering it it's not as easy as um, if you have a target frequency let's say like the Schumann resonance and you know take a random piece of plastic like this and go voila and call it a day it doesn't work that way we actually have to find out the dialectic properties and from there on we'd be able to calculate the resonance and the shapes that we need so but with that idea I wanted to test if it was even the possibility and I started to think how how could I test this you know what I have around the house so I started looking around and then when I hear the word dialectic I, I think of capacitors right so I'd look at my capacitors and I had this pretty big one you know this high this thick and uh, around 2000 UF and I said you know what there's a big dielectric in there and perhaps if you want the thing is the cosmic and the high frequencies is always random even the ones we can detect so my my theory which was my own at this point was um, even if we don't tune any device per se as low efficiency as it should be it should get triggered and random by these energy fields if it really can do that right so I decided to test it with the capacitor. Now obviously the capacitor isn't designed natively to interact with this, so nothing's going to happen unless you do something to it. So I modified the capacitor. I built a big coil all around it with magnetic wire. So the whole idea was um, I got one end free, and the other end goes into the plus of the capacitor. I don't want any direct coupling, just magnetics, okay? So what's supposed to happen is, let's say there'd be this kind of random, even vacuum, if you understand in my previous scalar wave videos where I talk about how the sum zero fields in any waveform and part of the cycle are already built in so in essence we already have a mechanism to interact with the vacuum through the EM fields so uh, I wanted to find a way to you know to kind of put it all together so um, my idea was if we're getting random quote-unquote vacuum fluctuations it should energize even as inefficiently cause a pong back from the dialectic as an EM field which we can couple into through the positive plate 
which would direct that pulse through the coil as an as just a, essentially a field which now here's the kicker i took part of the shield off of the capacitor so i have access to the ground so now when i put the ground against the ground i end up with a new capacitor which is asymmetrical to the first one they're completely independent now what happens is when i test the main capacitor there's no naturally even with that kind of a coil setup you wouldn't expect anything interesting happening but let's say there is a dialectic resonance even at random the the energy field should be going through the coil and inducing into the second capacitor and what's interesting is we should get a DC accumulating so we're not using diodes we're not using any closed loop yet we've created a second capacitor folks that potentially charges from the vacuum fluctuation so to speak so I put my meter on there and sure enough close to 100 millivolts I drain it I try it again it slowly comes back up. I drain it, I try it again, it slowly comes back up. I short it out for minutes, it comes back up. I measure the regular capacitor, nothing going on there. So this is a very good sign, folks, is what I think anyways. And to take, if you understand, and it's so weird, I don't know why I keep surprising myself, but when we t play with the negative energy, the vacuum and all this, everything always seems to work backwards. And by backwards, not just the way the systems work, but the way we try to manipulate those systems seem to be backwards. What I'm getting at is maybe we're doing the wrong approach, well in part maybe, by trying to interact with these vacuum energies using um, conductive coils, uh, conductive antennas, when if you're following what I'm saying, perhaps the better way of doing it is with dialectic version of antennas to interact with these vacuum fluctuations instead. Now, bringing the idea, one would be able to, um, if you follow sympathetic resonance, we should stick with the golden ratio. And if we know the dielectric properties, let's say build two separate plates of different size, but that are in resonance with each other nearby, you know, like mirrored to each other, maybe two, three distance. Everything would have, it's hard without knowing the details, but quickly speaking, the two plates would be next to each other as an antenna one would trigger with these fields of near cosmic and even unknown ultra high frequency the other one too but both in resonance but interacting to different fields now a little bit of traditional em theory is in the middle you get the constructive interference which would preferably create a new low frequency field and this is a potential mechanism we can build which would potentially amplify these vacuum fluctuations and interactions which we could use a low impedance coil in the middle not a capacitor per se in this sense but this could be rectified and charged into a cap dump which could extract this vacuum energy at higher potentials so again at, at this point it, it's speculating this device but I really think we should look at how we're doing it and maybe we are doing it backwards in part. So maybe different plastic and glass conductors in the air would be a better form of interactions, but we have to work a mechanism around it to be able to successfully extract these energy interactions. So I've tested it with the capacitor, and I will show you what happens right next. Okay, so here is what I've done around the capacitor, and I've cut through the shield here to have access to the um, grounding in the capacitor as well for an additional capacitor. And here's one side of the coil going to the negative, uh, to the plus, and the negative here is free. And then that's the negative, the two negatives here is what forms the second capacitor that I can tap the energy out of. So again, as I've explained, the whole idea is to use the dielectric resonance to output a pulse and the positive plate couples into it and the coil directs the flow. It's just, it's strict, this is left open because we're strictly magnetic flow, we want the magnetic coupling and that charges the, um, basically the second capacitor and that's what we have access to. Now what seems to happen is there's a continuous rays and it goes pretty well near a hundred millivolts even more if I let it go in but what happens is when I put the meter it quickly loads and then you'll see it go down but once I put the meter back after a few seconds the voltage goes back up 
So I'll show you that right now. I've got the meter and look at the meter. 136, but I'm loading it down here because I'm holding the meter. So when it gets down to about 50, we'll let it go. Okay, I'll give it a few moments to build back up. And I did put the scope on it and it seems to give me random sharp spikes anywhere from 2 to uh, 7k. If that means anything. Alright, so we'll do it again. See, now we're back to 76 and then it drops back down. So the capacitor is continuously... Not the capacitor per se, the second capacitor that's that I've created out of this setup because this one here is left open. So if we were to measure the regular capacitor, see we get nothing on the meter. Basically, it's not charging the main capacitor. So that was the idea to test my theory, which is very promising. So now it's just a matter of figuring out how to set up real environmental antennas. See, there it goes.